Hello friends, I hope you all have started preparation for phase 2 as well. Here I have brought you a detailed discussion for all the memory based questions for the RBI Grade B DPR 2023 examination which was held on 16th of July. So we have tried to compile all the various uh, questions that appeared in both the objective economics paper as well as the descriptive English paper. So let's uh, discuss this uh, each and every question that came in the examination and uh, the expected answer and if there is any uh, controversial uh, question which is not completely written such kinds of things are also uh, seen so let's watch this video throughout the end so first of all let's discuss about descriptive english it was more or less as expected there were four questions one essay second pressy third letter writing and fourth was reading comprehension so essay pressy and reading comprehension has always been asked the additional this time was only letter writing formal letter writing and we had already done practice for this so there were four options for essay 35 marks and the word limit was also mentioned you had to write between 500 to 520 words for pressy it was 25 marks and again the word limit was between 150 to 170 words for letter writing there were three options given you had to write a letter formal letter on one of those 20 marks and 150 words for rc there were five questions from a passage and the passage for pressy and rc they were not same they were completely different so this was for 20 marks and there was no word limit for rc so for essay let's see these are the four topics that were available and you had to write an essay first is developed nations are pressuring underdeveloped and developing countries to cut green gas emissions even at the cost of their own development in your views should uh, such undeveloped and developing countries sacrifice interest at the altar of global environmental issues then the second topic was indian economy recovers from the pangs of the coronavirus and induced lockdown much better than many developed countries so what are the causes of india's resilience in your views then next was that discussed significance of online education for skill development for various at various uh, levels and the fourth one was land subsidence is a persistent issue in few areas of india's northern mountain areas uh, was in this uh, this was there in the news recently in, in which thousands of peoples were affected so such uh, disaster is man made or is it natural you have to discuss about that all right then the pressy the main theme of the pressy was importance of critical thinking and on digital integrity so you had to write a short pressy on this passage that was given for reading comprehension the main passage was basically centered around how government individuals and corporate manufacturers can take a step towards minimizing waste what all different actions that they can take for formal letter writing the three options as of now we have one no, uh, we have two that appeared first one was that as an hod to your, of your department you had to write a letter to hod of the it department in your organization to conduct a training on ms excel this is a very easy one you could just highlight how important the ms excel has and the software skills have become in today's time and then so to conduct a training would benefit the individuals efficiency as well as it will be in the favor of the organization as a whole as well then the second topic was you, know, you had to write a letter to the hr head of a company regarding the contribution to ngo towards clean environment and, uh, as part of the csr activity okay so these were the questions which were there in the english paper then let's move to the economics paper so we have here there was a question on martial learner index so this is from international economics various statements were given and it was asked that which of them is true for martial learner condition so the right one was that this martial learner condition is generally based on the idea that you know when uh, the de depreciation of currency can actually improve the balance of trade only if the sum of price elasticities of demand for the countries and of exports and imports is greater than one this is what the learners uh, condition tell you 
Then the next question was on calculation of marginal cost. You were given the amount of labor used. You were also given the total product function, and from that you had to find marginal cost. Here, uh, as per our information, we don't have the actual, you know, the equation that was given. But uh, for most of the students, we know that the marginal cost was five. That was coming out to be in this question. Then the next question was savings rate different for two countries so, and the rates of growth of population, depreciation, all those things were also given. And you had to apply the solo model that what would happen, you know, in the long run. So see, this is also given in our notes, this phenomena, the, there is a concept called Slovian paradox of thrift. This question is around that. So basically what happens is that uh, if there is an economy where the saving rate is high, then the, that particular economy will have a larger capital stock and output. But the saving rate will has only a temporary effect on the growth in the output per person. And eventually the economy will grow only up to the point where it reaches a new equilibrium capital per person level. But the... Uh, this does not tell you that there is going to be a permanent change in the savings uh, rate. Okay, it has to be only a temporary effect in the economy's growth. So basically, the main idea is that that increasing the saving rate or a higher saving rate can only you know push the growth rate only temporarily. But the main important lesson from solar model is that the permanent increase in the growth rate of per capita income output happens only through change or improvement in technology in the long run. So that's the correct answer. Then there was another question which asked you uh, the meaning of V in the Harrington um, equation. So we have know that the growth rate is given by S upon V. So they had asked you what is the meaning of V. It's, it was very easy. It's the capital output ratio. We have already covered that in our notes also here. Then the next question was on zero budgeting meaning. Several statements were given to you and you had to say that what does zero budgeting uh, stand for. So basically zero budgeting is when all expenses, you know, the process when the, the budgeting starts from a zero base. Basically all expenses are justified for that particular period. So uh, the basically when you build the budget, you build it around and what is needed for the upcoming period and irrespective of whatever um, whether the budget is higher or lower than the previous one that's that, that doesn't matter whatever you need for the upcoming period the budget will be framed on that and the next question was on monopolistic competition you had to find the long run profit so the answer here is zero then there was a question on calculation of markup and elasticity of demand was given. So see, markup we know is price over marginal cost. This is how you define the markup. Okay. And in other terms, in terms of elasticity, it is given by the reciprocal of 1 minus 1 upon elasticity of demand. How? See, where is this formula coming from? We know that for a monopolist, the relationship is that marginal revenue is equal to price times 1 minus 1 by E. And at equilibrium, this has to be equal to marginal cost. Now, you only consider this. So, markup is what? Price over marginal cost. This is going to be 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon elasticity of demand when you interchange these. So, elasticity of demand was already given you to you. You have to just plug in the number and get the markup, which is price equals to 2 times marginal cost. A similar question we had covered in our mock test also. Then the next question was on implication of stopper Samuelson on real income of factor C. Stopper Samuelson tells you that, you know, the as the relative price of the commodity will rise, the real return to that factor, you know, will also rise in which particular factor? In the one which is most intensively used in the production of that good. So that's what stopper Samuelson tells you and it will fall if the opposite happens and the next question was on which of the following is used when regression is over identified so this is a simultaneous equation 
uh, topic here the answers are two uh, SLS which is uh, two stage least squares and environmental in an instrumental variable then the next question was that we had to calculate the income elasticity of milk and the expenditure made on the other commodity was 75 percent approximately elasticity was 0.8 so you had to find what would be the income elasticity for milk so you just had to simply use the formula for angel aggregation and you'll get 1.6 here then the next question was calculation of coefficient of skewness again a very easy one you had to apply the direct formula difference between q1 and q3 and you know sum was also given and q2 was also given so we have already covered the formula here the coefficient of skewness that's all that you had to do here next question was calculation of apc apc is average propensity to consume which is given by the ratio of c by y again already there we have covered it in our note and from the consumption function that was given at a particular y value the answer was coming out to be uh, one as per our information then the next question was that you know you were given probabilities of getting selected in a particular company and getting not selected in another one so what is the probability that you get selected in at least one now the easier way to solve such questions is, is one minus probability of not getting selected in any of these so this easily gets you to the answer which is coming out to be 2.85 next question there was a question on CAPM model capital asset pricing model now this is a very uh, important model in financial markets and the values were given to you beta risk free return return with risk and you have to find the expected payoff you just simply use the direct formula that we is uh, used in CKPM model so this is an important topic although not clearly specified in the syllabus for our of uh, the DEPR exam but this has also been asked in phase 2 in 2022 to paper so this is important and this will become important this year also and um, you know we have a special class of finance topics also in our phase two schedule where Prachi ma'am will cover this topic in detail so uh, here the answer was 12.5 next question was that MRTS was given and price of labor and capital were given and you were asked whether the firm should employ more labor or more capital so you just had to compare the ratio of labor and capital prices with MRTS and write your answer so most likely the answer here was uh, labor would be substituted for capital then Calder model lays emphasis on what its technical change we had also covered this concept in the note the ultimate factor is technical dynamism Next question, failure and is was an important improvement over which uh, theory? Lewis theory. Again, very well covered in the notes. So Lewis had ignored that how the subsistence sector would uh, grow, which is a major drawback in the Lewis uh, theory. So failure and is came up with his uh, theory that was an improvement. The next one was who postulated unbalanced growth theory. Again, a very straightforward question. It was Alberto Hirschman. Next, RER is calculated for how many currencies? Again, 40 currencies. Earlier, it was 36 currencies. Now, this has been revised recently only uh, from 36 to 40 in 2021. So, a very uh, basic question from current affairs and you will also find um, RBI bulletin report on this as well. Next question, ability to pay principal is based on what? It's based on income and wealth. The more income and wealth you have, the more you are able to pay the tax and so on. Next question was sustainable development index. Which of these is a sustainable development index? The right answer is green index it's actually the green growth index okay basically which measures the performance of uh, your how sustainably you achieve the targets the sustainable development uh, goals next was a calculation of deadweight loss question now here it's a very controversial kind of question usually what you do is that whenever you have to calculate the deadweight loss you take uh, find the area of that particular triangle and where you take the difference in 
prices times the difference in quantities and divide by 2 this is the area of the triangle this gives you the derivative loss now if you could just try to solve this you will get the answer 125 by the whatever the values were given in the question but the question is here that this is a very uh, critical question here they had no mentioned that you know whether the initial quantity was uh, you know 250 at equilibrium or something like that so just that the, the price increased now dead weight loss is efficiency loss or welfare loss to the society the, that happens in cases of price ceiling or price floor or um, some kind of tax such things lead to dead weight loss price increase could also mean that you know maybe he's a monopolist he's his only seller so he is operating on some point on the demand curve and then he decides to increase the price and now he's operating on another point so his producer surplus would increase and nothing will happen to the social welfare right so nothing should happen uh, you know there is no dead weight loss actually essentially here so that's why uh, because it's a very open-ended question that was left so most likely some of you have actually tried to calculate it through this procedure and found out the answer to be one 125 which was one of the option also but it's a little tricky one right if you really go by the definition of deadweight loss i feel that here in this question as per if only this much is mentioned then there shouldn't be any deadweight loss here next question is that when there's a relation between two explanatory variables again a very straightforward question it's called multicollinearity covered in the notes as well then the ratio of mux upon px and mu by upon pi was given so again had to compare the row ratio of prices with the slope of the indifference curve and what should happen with x should be substituted or y so again here in such questions you are assuming that there we have well behaved different indifference curves and in that case what is going to happen next a sample is drawn from normal populations so how would the distribution of the uh, sample would be so this is a CLT question central limit theorem it's what's going to be normal next uh, you had questions you have some statements on Mandraka provisions and you have to find out which of these would be correct so you had some kind of options on the time limit of Mandraka that what is the time limit for cash payments or how is cash payment done and if somebody is not given employment then what uh, is, is that person given employment allowance all those kinds of things were mentioned in the statements the next was the determination of interest rate in neoclassical model it happens to be supply and demand for loanable funds next statements on environment was stated and you were asked that which organization stated it some options were UNESCO and so on next there was a question on the public economics where from peacock weisman hypothesis it's a very famous hypothesis on public expenditure so it was asked what is the actual meaning of concentration effect in peacock weisman hypothesis so public expenditure basically will not increase in a smooth and continuous manner it increases in a step-like fashion that's what peacock weisman hypothesis tells you and one of the reason is the concentration effect which means that you know if the expenditure of the central government increases more than the state and local government then the concentration of expenditure will be dominated by the central government that's what concentration of it is then the next question was how is the uh, foreign exchange reserve supply curve derived so it's the major component is the exports of a countries of goods, uh, go goods and services that derives the foreign exchange higher would be the exchange rate higher would be the export and supply of foreign exchange Next, Tobin tax is based on more. It's based on forex for India. It's based on the shares. Next, purchasing power parity conceptual question was there. Some statements were given uh, on this particular topic. Next, there was a report on climate change named "Making Peace with Nature," and it was asked who gave this report. So it was UNEP. Next the question: 50 units of good one and 20 units of good two and p1 also was also given 12 so you need to find slope now slope is everybody knows it's dy by dx if you know two points it's, it says 50 units of good one so 50 here and 20 units of good two so just 
obviously slope is going to be what if you take here it's going to be 20 by 50 which is actually 0.4 now the irony was that in the options as per some of you there was no you know mention of a negative sign obviously the slope it's negative right um, if 50 units of good 1 and 20 units of good 2 so you join this you there's there's going to be a negative slope here so it's a bit weird that actually what is the examination trying to you know test you on so uh, because at times also we ignore the sign of elasticity of demand however usually price elasticity of demand is negative so in most of the questions you will also see that the sign is ignored so it actually really depends upon what the examiner will take the right answer for this question to be it can be 0.4 or it can also be none of those given as options because there was no negative sign in the options next uh, what happens towards the left of the is so the right answer is that there is excess demand in the goods market why so because see this is your is curve you pick up any point okay here here you will see that investments demands are greater than the savings for instance if you take about uh, the two sector model also so there is excess demand in goods market then the next question was that what happens to the shape of the LM curve when fiscal policy is fully effective so obviously if the LM curve is horizontal then only fiscal policy is going to be fully effective because if you shift the IS curve okay an expansionary fiscal policy will shift the IS curve towards the right and there is going to be complete increase in the equilibrium output so LM curve has to be horizontal in that case next question was on definition of primary deficit so it's the difference between fiscal deficit and interest payments again a very straightforward question next which distribution is used to compare the mean from two samples some of the options were ANOVA analysis of variance chi square distribution and some more other options uh, were given in this question so these were the questions that appeared now whatever is done is done instead of you know contemplating that what would be the cutoff and whether you will be in or out you should straight away start your preparation for phase 2 we have already prepared a preparation guide for phase 2 you can download it from the uh, link in the description of this video we have prepared a 40 day study plan for you and the uh, the tests that will be released for phase 2 for both these papers the schedule and everything is also planned so just have a look at and start your preparation right away now as far as cut, cut off is concerned yes the paper was relatively very easy to moderate side so we do not expect the cutoff to be low it can be it can go up and definitely the because the last day cutoff was 41 out of 100 for phase one and this time because the two papers even if you average out we do not we do expect that obviously it's going to go up from here but it can be somewhere around the range of 50 plus uh, 3 minus 3 not much if you average it out also so uh, let's hope for the best and uh, whatever is done is done just start your preparation and try to aim for a great marks in phase 2 even if you feel that you know your phase 1 didn't go well because at times uh, it's also seen that you know the, the, your f after phase two the cutoff is going to be come out of out of 400 marks so you still have you know 50 percent even if you it was you get a little low score or you pass only by margin here in phase one don't worry you still have good chance to cover up here so uh, at times people who score less uh, it's seen that you know they might score better here and opposite also happens so again just be hopeful uh, and start your preparation i hope this compilation is fruitful for future aspirants if you have any queries you can call us anytime thank you